got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere. And here's the guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can do. Welcome back to my channel on Vegas Stories. Okay, I'm going to start off the conversation by saying if you like the video, all right, hit the like button, okay? That's really going to be nice for me, okay? Hit the like button. If you don't like it, you can hit it. I'll handle it. Don't worry. Either way, everything's okay. But, you know, give me an opinion. At least I know what you're doing. All right? In the meantime, too, if you like the video and you want to subscribe, hey, you can subscribe. That's a nice thing because then you'll get all the videos, you know? So that's an important thing. You won't miss anything. Okay. So now that I got past that situation, let me get you to the beer of the day. As I told you before, the international beers, some of the ones that I'm really experimenting with, higher alcohol content. Now that's a good thing because I'm going to get the buzz without the bloat. That's the key. Buzz without the bloat. Okay, so I'm going to show you another beer today. Now, I'm still in the country of Belgium. I'm having a tough time leaving this place because they got a lot of good beers. In fact, I think I need to really visit the country with this kind of stuff in America that I'm getting. I mean, maybe I need to go over and visit that place. I think it would be nice. So let me show you the beer I'm drinking because this is a good one. Okay, this is called a Voodoo Ranger. I mean, can, look at that name. I mean, just that alone makes you want to pick it up and try it. Okay? Now, on the bottom, it says Juicy Haze IPA. All right? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's another IPA thing. So, you got to like it, right? Because it's, uh, I mean, it should be good. Now, it's 7.5%. Not as powerful as some of the other beers that I was drinking, higher alcohol content. But let me tell you something. Don't drink too many of these because you're going to feel it. Okay, so what you want to do is start off with one and then see how you feel. And if you got a nice little buzz, maybe you stop because if you start having multiple of these, uh, I'm going to tell you, it's going to put you on your butt. I mean, it just will. So I'm on my second. Uh, you know, I think I can handle two. But, uh, you know, maybe I want to try three because it's a nice day. I don't know. But that's enough on the beers. Now, let's get back into the scenario on the stories, okay? Now, as you know, you know, I worked for a company that was a licensed disseminator. Let me explain something before we go any further. In the state of Nevada, for the race books in Nevada, okay, in order to bet and get paid in the race books in Nevada, you got to get the information and you got to get the results and you got to get all of it from a licensed Nevada disseminator, okay? That's the term. I didn't make it up. That's the term, okay? The reason this was done, simple, okay? Because back in the day, who had charge of the, the race wire, the so-called first race wire that was here? Eh, Bugsy Siegel, Maya Lansky. Now, I don't need to go any further than that, do I? Because, you know, what happened was when Bugsy, when Bugsy was killed, well, the Nevada gamers came up, you know what? I think we need to come up with a law that says, you know, this information that Bugsy and Maya were handing out, maybe we need to have it like licensed by the state of Nevada, making sure that all the information they provide to the race books in the state is, you know, cleansed, clean, no outside interference, no involvement with anything in the casinos, nothing, totally independent. And that's what they did, okay? And so for about 25 years, okay, there was a company in this town that was called Swanson's News Service. And they were the licensed disseminators. And they provided information on horse racing. They got their information, you know, from, from basically United Press International, which was a wire service, and also from the Daily Racing Forum, which provided information as well. Both of them provided the information that gave them enough that they could disseminate this information, and the people in the state of Nevada can bet and try to win some races. So that's the name of the game. Okay, it's important to understand that because when we try to come into business, we had to compete with these guys who've been around for 25 years. They basically had a monopoly. So my boy Chucky and our company, which at the time was called Sports Forum, we basically competed with Swanson's News Service. Okay. All right, and that's what we did. So in order to try to get the customers that basically he had, 
The only way you can do this is your information is going to be faster because the faster you provide information, the quicker the patron can make the next bet. He can determine or she can determine whether she won or lost and then go from there. So it's all about speed and accuracy. The other part of that service, if you watch the movie The Stain with Redfin and Newman, it's a recreation of the race. It was done for entertainment purposes 15 minutes after the race was officially over, wherever the hell they were running the, the races at whatever track around the country. And we had announcers that did that. So it leads into my little scenario, my story. Because in order to compete properly, you know, in order to do anything in business, you got to kind of get somebody from the other team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you got a team and you're trying to make it better, where do you get your players? From the teams that are good. You, you know, you basically get it. Whether free agency, trade, whatever. You know, I'm just telling you, that's how you compete. Well, there was only one wire service in this town and it was Swanson's news service and he had the guy he had the big guy who was the best announcer in the state a guy by the name of Joe DeLuca I mean he was the creme de la creme I mean he was the best at what he did okay every single race he called was majestic everybody would be in pins and needles and trying to figure out who was going to win the race and all they could do is hear it. No television. You don't see anything. This guy's giving you this stuff like it's a radio. Okay? And he's recreating the race. He's giving you like the drama of the two-minute race. I mean, and he's good. He's just like the guy at the track. Okay? Now picture this, okay? I got this guy. We basically took him over. He's like getting Mike Trout. I mean, basically what we did is we took their best guy and we put him on our team. But I had a little information from my boy Chucky on one particular day. It happened to be a Tuesday, light day, not a lot of racing, no California racing on Tuesday. You know, no California racing on Tuesday, so it's a light day. It ends quicker, doesn't go as long, okay? Joe was the guy who was calling the races for that particular day, okay? So Chucky calls me in the night before, like, you know, Monday night, he calls me, he says, hey, you know, you got to go in in the morning. I said, well, you know, why? I said, Joe's there, and, you know, you got the other guys there. Well, why? I got to wait. So why are you going to keep your eye on him? So why are you going to keep my eye on him? What's wrong? He said, well, he just got word. His wife, Rosie, works at the Sahara. You know, she's in the slot area. Well, she went down for the count. Something happened. I don't know. She tripped. Something. Next thing you know, she's collecting unemployment benefits, okay? Anytime Rosie goes down, Joe usually follows real close, Okay. You got to keep your eye on this guy. You keep your eye on him and don't take your eye off him because I'm expecting him to go down. I said, Chuck, I think you're a little paranoid in this situation. All right. Like, God, that's like ridiculous. But you know what? I'm there. I'll watch him. You know, whatever. So we're down there and, you know, we're basically in the building and it's a building that's adjacent to the office and it's in a, a building and they're on the second floor. So we're in this building in the back. Okay, and we're re he's recreating the races and we're going through the day's procedure and all that. Joe's doing a great job. Everything's working. Perfect. Nothing wrong. Well, you know, we got to the very end of the particular day. There was one more race to go. All right. So, you know, I, I needed to get a drink of water. I mean, you know, shit, man. I've been doing all this work in here. I mean, was taking a bathroom break. I got to get a drink of water. Okay, so I basically, the water thing is right like 10 feet away. It's 10 feet away. It's just out of the room, 10 feet away. You walk over there and you get a drink of water. Okay, so I walk over and get a drink of water. Next thing I go, boom. What? Oh, oh Jesus Christ. I walk back in the office and there's my boy, Joe. He's on the floor. Joe, what the frick happened? Oh, I was trying to get the result off the wire, and I tripped, and I'm, oh, my back, my back. Joe, Jesus Christ, really? You're hurt, and there's still a freaking race to go? You got to be kidding, Joe. How did this happen? You, I just can't freaking believe it. Oh, I says, Joe, Joe, and all of a sudden, the race result comes over the wire. I don't remember what track it was. It was the last race of the day. I ripped it off. We knew the winners. We knew the second place and the third place. 
and I'm looking at the thing, and you know, I'm not a race caller. I mean, I can give results. I mean, I, you know, I can tell you all that stuff on the microphone, but I don't have the talent to call a race and all that stuff. So all of a sudden, Joe's on the ground. Oh, I said, Joe, Joe, God, can you do it? Can you give me one more time? I mean, get your, you know, for, you know, for, for, just reach down deep. Call in the inner Joe DeLuca. Give me the best you can give right now. Uh, yeah, get me the mic. Uh, so I got him the microphone. I swung it over to him. I gave him the sheet of paper so he knows the horses and what he can. He flips the mic on and he says, there they go. On the outside, Secretariat is in the lead, followed by Pleasant Colony and Sea Biscuit running third. This race is going really good. They're coming down the back stretch and they're coming to the wire. Oh my God, Pleasant Colony in front. Secretariat second, Sea Biscuit third. Flips the mic off and goes, oh! I said, Joe, Joe, you did it. My man, you're my man, yo! Oh, I said, Jesus Christ, Joe. I mean, you know, it's amazing that you were able to concentrate like that for that whole time and give me that good call. That was great, Joe. That was great. Don't worry. Don't move. Don't do anything. Just stay there. I can give the result. I can give the result on the microphone. You don't have to do anything. Joe, I'll pick you up. We'll, we'll walk you to, we'll take you wherever you want to go. Just sit tight. So the result comes over again. I'm looking at the result. I'm about to jump. Goes, oh. and he's like, he's really into this, y'all. Oh. And so I gave him the result. He flips the mic on me. Okay, he reads the result basically, and then you know, and the winner was Pleasant Colony uh, Secretary at Sea Biscuit. Gives the result. Gives all the numbers. Shuts up. Oh. Got through the day. It was amazing. We got through the day. Joe's on the ground. I picked him up. He said, take me to my car. I said, yeah, Joe, don't worry about it. I'll get you to the car. I take him to the car. I put him in the car. I, can you drive, Joe? Can you really drive? You need it. I, uh, I can handle it. Don't worry. I know I can handle it. I says, Joe, you got to go get that checked. I mean, you know, I don't know what happened, but you got to get it. Uh, and I, uh, it's, oh, it's painful, but I'll make it. I'll make it. So he drives away. And all of a sudden, I go upstairs, and I told Chuck. I says, Chuck, the bad news is he fell. I told you. He says, I told you not to leave him. You left him, right? I said, I got a drink of water. Ten seconds. I told you not to leave him. I said, Chuck, Jesus Christ, I said. This guy was going to fall somewhere. He fell. But the good news is he called the last race. And the other thing is he even gave the results. Everything's all done. So I think that's okay. What do you think? He says, Jesus Christ, now we got a freaking problem with them because we need them. And, you know, I said, well, Chucky, it's not like we don't have other guys that can do this. We'll make the other guys do it. But we got through the day. Everything is fine. Now, granted, I did screw up a little bit because I got a drink of water. But, you know, be that as it may, we got through the day. You should be happy because I'm happy. And with that, Chuck just grunted and kind of said, you know what? We'll deal with the prick when he gets back. I said, yeah, no, we'll do that. But at least we got through the day, and that's a positive thing. So with that, eh, you know, everything was said right. Everything was done right. I went back to my little office. I got my stuff. I walked out basically saying, boy, that was a freaking day. And next thing you know, solve the problem. Come back again. I'll give you another story.